this is a story many of you have heard before, um, either from me or from somewhere else. Um, and it takes place directly after the epic of Adam and Eve um, in the Garden of Eden. It's called The Fable of Cain and Abel. Time passed, and Adam and Eve knew each other, and Eve bore the brothers Cain and Abel. When young, Cain and Abel showed little talent for anything and were a total disappointment to their parents. However, as time went on and the, young, the two young men grew, they answered their great callings with an air of destiny. Abel kept an eye on the sheep, and Cain spent his days tilling the soil. They were quite a team, and between them everything got done. Meanwhile, as they had been growing up and discovering their talents, God the Almighty had once again taken an interest in human life. Breaking the shun that he had imposed on Adam and Eve back in the garden, he had come back to the he had come to the little farm farm several times and won the brothers awe and respect with his godliness. Now he came upon them in the shape of a white horse with wings as they worked the field and counted the sheep in the bright morning hours. Greetings, Cain and Abel. How doeth thou with this sheep watching and er tilling? Quite well, my lord, said Abel. Not one of the sheep has escaped me in the last six hours. Good, good. Now tell me, good brothers, hast thou prepared thy offerings yet? They had. Abel gestured to a few of the sheep, one of which said, Bah! <laughs> Ooh, a live offering! How incredibly delightful, and, I'm sure under the right conditions, very fragrant. I respect your offering. And this is what I have brought to thee, God, said Cain. In his hands he had a basket, which held an, an exotic variety of precious fruits, many of which he'd hiked far to retrieve. What? Fruit? boomed God. Lame. <laughs> Cain's head drooped and the corners of his mouth sagged. God said, Cain, why has thou mouth drooped and the corners of thy mouth sagged? <laughs> Just think. If you keep working tirelessly and without resentment for about 200 more years or so, I shall probably come to accept thee. The great horse gave a snort and flew off across the fields. When God was well and truly gone, Cain, who had turned red with shame and rage, fashioned himself a club from a tree branch and came up behind his brother. So, brother, that was quite an offering you gave to the Lord. You plainly went to a lot of trouble to point out those sheep to him. Eh, it wasn't that hard. Yes, and how long it must have taken. You know how long it took for me to get all those fruits? Like two whole hours, and I hiked all the way across those woods over there. And that whole time you were sitting here counting sheep. What ifs? Brother, you are a plague, a couch potato, and a suck-up. I rise against thee. Thwack! And Abel fell, unable to defend himself as Cain smited him twice more with the deadly club, making sure that there could be no life left in his prone brother. Thus ended the short life of Abel. The next day, God came eagerly back, hoping to feast his eyes once more on the sheep and to enrage Cain once more, which was fun. But when he arrived, this time in the shape of a altocirrus cloud, he found only Cain in the process of eating his previous day's offering. This puzzled the Lord greatly, and he said, Cain, where is thy brother Abel? And why are the sheep so scattered across the field, so plainly uncounted? <laughs> Gee, I don't know, God. Maybe if he'd liked my offering more, Abel might have decided to show up for today's offering. Hmm, that is a strange remark indeed. I hope thy words are of innocent nature. Oh, there be Abel, and he hath brought me an offering of flies. How delightful, but... Why is he sleeping? He, uh, he ate too much, like uh, a whole sheep. Really now? I thought he would save, save every last sheep for me. I suppose he was just that greedy, my lord. Wait a minute. Was? He is dead! Cain, thou hast murdered thine only brother. The cirrus cloud made an abrupt change, and suddenly it grew into a cumulonimbus and began to rain somewhat. Cain, thou hast sinned greatly. It is my godly duty to punish thee. Thou shalt be an outcast of the lands, and who, any who find thee shall slay thee immediately. 
I must go tell them. Wait, who finds me? I'm the only human on earth apart from my dumb parents. <laughs> Nevertheless, they shall find thee and slay thee without pity. <laughs> Suddenly, Cain's knees trembled and his mouth quivered. A tear glittered at the corner of one eye. Oh, God, this punishment is too much. I cannot bear it. Don't worry, Cain. I'll uh, make sure you are avenged tenfold should that ever happen. We good? I suppose so. And Cain trudged off into the wild, an outcast, just as his parents had been before him. The cloud, back in its cirrus form, drifted off in search of new entertainment, congratulating itself on yet another successful human interaction. Thanks for listening. <laughs>